Hey everybody, Rachel Miner here. Aloha my friends. Today I'm gonna hop on here with a special guest. And so I am going to uh, try to bring her on. This is the first time I've tried to like bring on a guest. And so um, we are gonna hop on here. Um, there we go. It'll take just a minute. There we go. Okay, I'm so excited today. You guys have heard me a lot and um, heard my story many times. And I wanted other people to tell their stories as well. And I wanted to be able to share those stories with you so that you guys can have hope that there are answers to your health issues out there. There's answers to the problems you deal with. There's answers to the things you struggle with. And so I, you know, wanted to share these awesome stories with everybody. And let's see if I can still have her come on here. I've never invited somebody else on my live before. So there we go. There we go. Perfect. Okay. We'll see if it works. Hey, there we go. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Awesome. <laughs> Yay, we did it. There's a first for everything, right? <laughs> that was unusually smooth. That was unusually smooth. Yeah. But I'm not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have my friend Candace here, and she has an amazing health story and journey of her own, and the way that she is now helping others with their journeys as well. And so I'm going to turn the time over to Candace, and we're going to hear from her. Okay, go ahead. Well, Rachel, thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Um, yeah, if any of your followers haven't checked out our conversation, then you should like you should fix that because we had a great conversation for um, people on my page the other day. It was wonderful. So uh, yeah, I adore you, Rachel. Thanks. <laughs> so where do I start? Okay, guys, uh, you know what? I'm just a regular person, right? I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I, um, you know, I'm trying to find my way in this world, right? And I was, oh gosh, in my late 30s and had finally realized and discovered that gluten made me completely psychologically crazy. I couldn't process emotions normally. I was always angry, irritable, full of rage, even suicidal thoughts. Um, just, I was just, it was like this every day and I was exhausting. And so I looked into that and had realized how much, I mean, I was having some stomach pain and issues there, but like the psychological repercussions of gluten for me and the intolerance I had was just profound and utterly life-changing once I actually stopped eating it. <laughs> so that was really kind of the beginning of my journey um, with, you know, with health. Well, you know, I was exposed to mold, which I didn't really know of or take seriously or get diagnosed properly. And I was sick for three months. And then a year later in 2011, I contracted Lyme disease through a tick bite. And, um, Hi, Debbie and Rick. Rick's saying hi from Logan. <laughs> I like the live stream thing. It's like, you know, we interrupt ourselves to say hi to people, but it's like, if we don't, then it's, it's like a one-way conversation. <laughs> so, you guys. So, um, yeah, I contracted Lyme disease in, in, here in Utah. I was out living at the time in Eagle Mountain, um, Utah County area. I spent my time in, didn't go hiking, didn't travel. And Honestly, I, I am so blessed and so lucky because so many people don't have the, the chips fall in just the right way to get diagnosed and get treatment with Lyme disease. And I did. And, um, you know, but it was new to me and rocked my world. And I think that the mold had 
you know, affected my immune system. But really what I want to kind of like let you guys know is that by the time you start having digestive issues, like if you just feel like, I mean, even if it's just some symptoms and you know, you're not really dairy intolerant or, or wheat intolerant or anything, um, those digestive issues, if you, if they happen frequently, your stomach is having problems. And if you do have a food allergy or, or an intolerance, you have leaky gut and the medical term is gut dysbiosis. And I don't want to go into a whole lot of that, but, um, but that's it breaks down your immune system. That's 70% of your immune system is in your digestive tract. And so, I didn't realize as just a regular mom who would get tired at two or three o'clock in the afternoon and just was just like everybody else, eating just like everybody else, sleeping just like everybody else, you know, working and going like everybody else. I did not realize how much I was, you know, my body was really suffering. So enter Lyme disease and um, almost overnight when I started treatment, um, you know, I had the rash, I got the rash biopsied because um, I didn't take no for an answer. I went to somebody, they kind of brushed me off and I thought, nope, something is weird here. I really want to get this looked into, but I wasn't even really feeling that sick yet. And so we biopsied the rash and um, unfortunately Lyme testing, there's so many false negatives. It's, uh, it's, it's, they need better practices for this because so many people don't think they have Lyme and then they, they do. <laughs> and so, um, but my test, even though I had the rash and everything, it was indicative of Lyme. It wasn't even positive, but it was a hundred percent Lyme disease. So I started treatment and at the time my youngest and last child was six months old. I had no idea if she'd been exposed to Lyme through my breast milk and thank you, Rick. And I, you know, I, I took antibiotics for a few months just because even naturopathically, which is the route that I took because most medical doctors in Utah don't take Lyme seriously and they don't treat you um, aggressively for as long as you need, like two or three weeks of antibiotics will not cut it. Like it just won't. And, um, Lyme, Lyme's scary. It's, it's almost scarier to me than cancer cells, like doing their thing. They're both really just super aggressive, right? But it's like, it needs something very specific. So I started treatment, but then within just a couple of weeks, as they died off, I was full of toxicity because as they're dying, they're releasing all these toxins. And I used to pull my baby on a blanket and crawl from room to room because I, I, every joint in my body hurt, I couldn't carry her. And so that went on to various degrees through for about two and a half years. Um, and it was lonely. It was scary. It was frustrating and I was just angry at the situation I, I was being faced with. And the thing is, it wasn't even just Lyme disease for two years. Lyme disease also brought mold, more mold sensitivities and I was exposed to mold a second time for a year before we found it out. Staph infections, parasites, um, and uh, like it's been 13 diagnosis diagnoses up to this point. And so um, Rick, I actually have heard of the West Clinic in Pocatello. I know some people that have gone there. Um, my doctor was in Provo and he was actually a lot more affordable for me. And so, but I've heard like he, the West Clinic is really good too. You just need doctors that are Lyme literate, people that really understand how it goes. So, but anyway, so through that whole process, I thought, you know, I mean, I already have 10 years experience working in hospitals cardiac patients. Um, I was a, a technician watching the heart rhythms and looking for problems and a nurse's aid. And so I had watched people heal for a long time. And I finally one day just decided, like I looked in the mirror and I did not recognize myself. It was, I smelled horrible. I don't think I had showered in like eight, nine days. It was, I mean, it just was so, I was so sick, but I was also so depressed and so sucked into this world of being my own nurse my husband worked 50 hours a week and I was the mother of three children and a 4,500 square foot home. <laughs> it was like, it was just, you know, a shit show, excuse my French. But I, I just, I, I thought this, this, there are some things here I can control and I'm done letting illness take control of more of my life than it really has to at this point. And so I got rebellious and I started just forgiving myself and loving my body and trying to go back to it. Because the one thing that I tell my clients that deal with chronic illness is that, and everybody really, like we have trillions of cells and their only job is to keep us alive. And we abandon them, we abuse them, we neglect them. We, I mean, it's just, they're, they're sentient beings in my mind and they're, they're doing things that they need to do, working with each other. And then we do things in contradiction. And I thought, you know what? My body's fighting just as hard as I am and I need to befriend it. 
And so that was kind of the beginning emotionally. And I, I just pushed through a lot of it. I raised my vibration. So when I talk about vibration and energy, it's like when you're in, creating art, music or art, right? You go into that flow state. Like, do you know what I'm talking about, Rachel? Have you ever experienced that flow state where it's just like time almost stands still? Yeah. So I, I figured out how to use that to reduce pain. <laughs> and so I would often be out at, uh, competing in karaoke competitions till one in the morning, going to my friends' parties and making myself be present, even if I was shaking and feverish or didn't feel well, just because that's what brought me joy. Yeah. And so I slowly climbed my way out of it and reinvented myself. And, um, you know, seven years later, I've managed well or I've healed from over 13 different illnesses, diseases and infections. And just I call myself a medical mindset expert because, <laughs> you know, I. <laughs> yeah. So that's really the gist of it. Of course, it's a really big, long seven year story, but I think I covered most of the highlights. So. That is so good yeah. because it gives people hope that even if they struggled for something for years and years and years, whether they have answers or not, there's hope that there are solutions. There are, there are things that can help them in their healing journey. And, and everything we use as tools, you know, whether it's loving yourself, whether it's supplements, whether it's coaches, whether it's doctors, like, like they're all things. And then you can, you know, find what's best for you. And I love how you searched and you finally decided for yourself. You're like, this is what my body needs. I need to love myself. I need to like give it. And I love that, you know, like give it a break. Like it's doing a job to like try to heal you. So love it back. Like, I love that. It just is so amazing. That is great. Yeah. Well, explain a little bit more about what you do now and how you coach other people through their chronic illnesses as well. You know, it really is a mind, body, spirit journey. I, I lean more towards holistic and natural anything just because we have, as a society, gone so far away from nature. You know, we live in these boxes. We surround ourselves with technology. You know, we don't have a lot of the same connection with the earth, which then also leaves us without that connection to our own bodies and what's going on. We're not taught how to listen to ourselves. We're just taught that, oh, when you're in pain, that's when your body is speaking to you. No, my gosh, your body is talking all day long and it's fun.